Welcome to SBR Forum Videos. I'm Peter Loshak. We are continuing our coverage of the 2013 Stanley Cup Finals right now with Swain Johnson. We've already covered a couple of games with him, and right now we're going to talk about Game 5. The series moves back to Chicago. Swain Johnson, thanks for coming back with us. Loshak, I am friggin' miserable, Benny. <laughs> you know what has two thumbs and looks like a vagina? Me, because I am the biggest pussy around by not going with my gut and taking over in Game 4. <laughs> I didn't, I didn't hear a lot of that, but now I just got it. You're, you're, you're angry because you liked the over in game four, but you didn't have the guts to, uh, to bet it. Yeah, well, look, I mean, handicapping's a tough game. You know, it, it doesn't matter what you want to do, what you think about doing. All that matters is what you do and what you don't do. Well, you know, it's bad enough that I lost with the Bruins as all 30 favorites on their home ice, okay? But what's even worse was that I knew. Dear God, I knew there was going to be a huge goal-scoring game coming. Game three is actually when I took my shot on over five plus a quarter. But, of course, Boston won 2 nothing. Cost me three units, but I wanted to come right back on over in game four last night. But it was too much of a sackless yep. wonder to pull the trigger. You know, I figured my, my rationale was I was chasing, didn't want to make that rookie mistake. I, sir... I'm a jackass. Well, look, it's not all bad. Your basic rationale was was actually very astute, and you do see this a lot in the playoffs. The first two or three games of any series, not just the finals, of any playoff series might go one way. Either go over, 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 or under, 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 and then a lot of times you do see, like, a stark reversal right around, like, game four, game five. So, um, you know, I think the good part that you can take from this is that uh, your instincts are, are, are generally pretty good. I think that the, uh, the lesson to be learned is maybe trust your instincts a little bit more. What do you think about that? I take a little bit of solace in that. I thank you very much for that. Mm -hmm. But, you know, as, uh, as always, uh, I was premature. And if I had a nickel for every time my wife said that, I'd be a millionaire. All right. But now comes, now comes the key part, though. What do we do for game five? You know what I mean? We don't want to be in the same position of having an opinion, not having the balls to go with it, and then, uh, you know, and then regretting it again. All right. The series moves back to Chicago. Boston, once again, is a familiar uh, underdog in the plus 130 range at Pinnacle right now. Plus 132, Chicago minus 143 as a home favorite on the other side. Total is five. The over is uh, plus 134. The under is minus 145. You know, my first thoughts, I mean, we saw what happened in the last game. I think, you know, there's no way you can do anything but take Boston here as an underdog of plus 132. And I actually think that the floodgates might have been opened a little bit. And uh, I think over five plus 134 might be a good bet as well. What do you think, Swinging John? Well, I'll tell you what, um, this series to me is such a coin toss that I don't know how anyone looks at Game 5 with crystal clear clarity. Right. I mean, uh, to me, one of two things are going to happen. Either the Hawks' big, big guns have now fallen their stride after, you know, Sharp, Taser, Kane all scored in Game 4, and they're going to score again on Saturday night, or that the Bruins' defense finally had a bad game, but the defense is going to rebound, and they're going to shut the Hawks down again. Now, personally... I don't know how you look at this game and really feel good about either one of those scenarios because, to me, they're both just as likely to happen. So if that is the case, I mean, if it is a, the proverbial coin flip, you've got to grab the underdog. Uh, I, I think that the floodgates were open, but I think that a solid return to defense mm. is in the cards for the Bruins. Personally, if I'm gonna if, personally, I'm gonna stay away from this side with a, a lean towards Boston just just based on the fact that they are purely underdogs, but. Uh, to me, I like. Uh, I'm gonna take the other side of the fence. I think it's gonna be a low-scoring game. Really? And um, I really do. You know, because if you look at that game five, uh, game, game four, um, Rask made 41 saves. Now, granted, he wasn't on his game, but how many could he realistically have stopped? I mean, deflections, um, uh, all kind of traffic in front, screens. I mean, this guy. There were a few that that he definitely had to own. But if you look at Crawford. I mean, he got beat over that glove hand like a rented mule. I'm <laughs> telling you, man, he just it was just unbelievable. They are picking that side of the uh, of the net over and over and over again. And um, I mean, to me right now, it's clear. Boston has got the better goal, and I think the defense is going to return. All right, so if Boston has got the better goal and you think the defense is going to return and you think that uh, Crawford's having some problems in net, then why do you like the under? Why wouldn't you just go for Boston at plus 132? Because I have no balls, okay? <laughs> I ha haven't we been over this, okay? Hasn't we been, I, I, you know, the thing about it is, though, I can just see that, you know, it's another one of those tight score games because they are in the United Center. Mm -hmm. I mean, the fans are going to be crazy. And the thing about it is, is that Boston does not have the offensive prowess that the Chicago Blackhawks do. And again, that's my reservation for not saying, you know what, Boston's a great underdog. Because as I said, 
to me, this game is a coin flip, but I really, I really and truly believe that there's going to be uh, a big return to defense. So that's what I like. All right, Swain Johnson. Well, I would say that uh, I, I don't. I'm not sure if I would actually call it a literal coin flip, but I would say it's definitely uh, much closer to a coin flip than the lines are giving credit for. I definitely will like uh, Boston at plus 132. That's going to be one of my picks. And as far as the total, yeah, I guess it's going to pass, but uh, just I can see it's coming a mile away, the way the gambling gods work. You know, you, you liked, uh, you took the over in game three, it went under. You didn't have the balls in game four, goes way over. Now game five comes and you're predicting a, a return to, to the under. What do you think the gambling gods are going to do here? Send it They're over. They're screw me. Send it over. <laughs> you just know. They got to screw me, baby. No, but I, I do, man. Hey, you like what you like. And I can, uh, that's the thing about this is that, you know, it's great to have a real confident opinion. You know those games that yes. you're just locked yes. on and you can see the score before it even happens. Absolutely. And you just, you know, I mean, it, it's just, you've got everything going for you, all the stats. I don't feel it in this game. No. really don't. I mean, look. The lines are going to be tight in a game five of a Stanley Cup final like this. Of course, you're not going to expect to have one of those uh, feelings for this. But your pick, your official pick on this game is what? The under five at minus 145? That's it for me, buddy. Where are you going? I'm going Boston plus 132. I agree with you, Bob. Mayo Marion Host is also kind of playing injured. I'll take Boston plus 132. Well, you know what? By the time the game is over, I'm going to be about three bottles into some wine, and I'm going to Skype you, and we're going to celebrate together. <laughs> All right. I'm looking forward to it. Sween Johnson, thanks so much for joining us again.